start again. Of course you can. <laughs> I just forgot how to speak. <laughs> Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here and today I am not in my studio. I am at Zilla Cabs and this is Paul from Zilla. Hello. And I'm sat usually where Joe would be sat. Joe's behind the camera. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and yeah, I'm doing a little bit of a guest spot. I figured that I would do a bit of filming while I'm here because I'm on holiday in Cornwall and Zilla are here too. So I brought my trusty 5150 screwdriver not included and Paul doesn't really do 5150s although a lot of the guys who play Zilla cabs do use 5150s as their go-to tone yeah so I thought it'd be interesting to get your reaction first I'm going to start by saying it's an iconic amp with some iconic sounds so I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it's just me disclaimer I don't have a massive amount of experience in using them I've heard them on a thousand recordings, and I, I get it. It suits those kind of sounds and stuff. But you say it's we can get some sort of 800 JC uh, JC 800 JMP kind of tones. A more a more varied palette. It may not yeah. be exactly okay, that, well. but I, I think we can get more out of it than the status quo. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just want to see your reaction. I'm starting on the crunch channel. Let's see what we get. Okay, I kind of like that. <laughs> Which one's there? Is that what we're going through? The uh, Alnico? Yes, so, so the guys at home are hearing the Alnico cream, which to my mind is a slightly chimier, more open version of a Vintage 30. Yeah. They're not the same, but to my ear, they are relatively close. Yeah. So I thought it'd be interesting to give the guys and girls at home a bit of a, a clip of that. So we're using the bright cap and the crunch channel, which isn't all the gain. And even then, the gain knob is at three. So that's, that's the thing for me, is that you've got to treat the gain knobs differently to something like a JMP. Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of like that. That's a kind of a classic uh, sort of sound that I would go for with an Alnico speaker, I'd say. This cab's open back. It is. Um, so you're going to have a little bit less of that thud. Yeah. Um, there is a resonance control on this amp, which means that if you want more thud, uh, you can dial that in. And I always start with the resonance control at kind of noon. Okay. Listen to the cab a little bit. Resonance here next to the press. Yeah. So the resonance is that low end thump, but it's kind of a, a compensator, if you will. Okay. So cool. if we're losing a little bit of that from the open back, if I take that from three all the way to seven. Kind of cleans up nice as well. And yeah. Uh, one thing that I think might surprise you is we'll try the red channel in a minute. That cleans up nicely as well. Uh, one of my good guitarist friends, a guy called Vinnie Lane, has been using a, a Mark One Fifty One Fifty for about twenty years. So since since new, I believe. But he'll have it on the red channel all the time. But he'll back his volume off a lot and do some slightly crunchy, really cleanish kind of things yeah. entirely on the channel. Everybody assumes is just chug, 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 chug. Okay, so we're on normal gain. Well, what's the green light? That's for So the green light is for the green channel. Okay. Um, so this is the one, I think it's got three gain stages, so it's quite martially. And I think this one's got, uh, how many gain stages are on this? Lots. But you, wait, hang on a second. You've got the um, right rhythm channel. Yeah, so right now, ignore the lead pre-gain and ignore the lead post-gain. Okay, Everything so else. we've got the, the volumes, uh, the gain the and the 
Yeah, so they're not labelled very well. The pre-gain is gain, yeah. and the post-gain is volume. Okay, so let's say the master. Yeah, that is your master. Uh, so if so you it's want... not particularly clean, though. No, uh, but you can... I mean, that's on the crunch mode. If I take the crunch mode oh, okay, okay. and then turn the volume up... So we got the cleans. All right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't do sparkly fender clean, but then this amp never would. No. Uh, but one thing that really interests me, I mean, that's with the bright cap in, but we are using the PRS with humbuckers, so that compensates a little bit. You, know, you do hear a lot about uh, vintage Marshalls that have a bright mod yeah, yeah, because they're just a little bit thin, but then a lot of Marshalls have a lot of low cut out of them before you even begin. That's how they end up so clear. Okay. Right, so yeah. we had that kind of crunchy sound. Yes. Can you push it a bit more? Uh, on the crunchy channel still. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so what we had before. And then, then just five-ish. Okay, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I like that. It's possibly a little bit darker than I'd normally go for, but they... That's that where sounds, the presence comes in. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, which you've got... So if I turn the resonance back down for that, because oh, okay, that yeah. low end that we yeah, compensated yeah. for okay. has suddenly brought too much low end in and back present, take presence up a little. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that, actually. <laughs> um and that's got quite a lot of, um, I don't mean presences in the, the control, like a, a kind of in the room, um, a, a, not a warmth, like a presence to it. Yeah, you it, can feel it. it melts your face off is the way I would describe it. It's got that thing, that face melting uh, immediacy. Okay. And so this is where I'll be interested to see your reaction of the lead channel. Can you just push it a bit more, the game? Yeah, on the, stick on this for a little yeah. while, yeah. The thing about something like a 5150 is it comes from that Marshallish heritage. It's it's not quite the same, yeah. but it's where they've added on bits and added on bits. So if you really think about it, if you don't kill the game, it goes back to being a Marshall again. Yeah, it's got kind of a sharpness to it as well that I kind of like. Yeah. So the um, let's leave the lead volume just above two, which is kind of like the, the happy place for, for a lot of people. Yeah. And go to the lead channel and I'll start with the gain on zero and just gently bring you in. Try the volume back to. Boxy kind of vibe to it there. It's, it's surprising. Yeah, I think there's five gain stages there, but they're all not being hit very hard. Okay. Until you blast it. Okay, so explain to me with the gain stages. That's um, as you're going up through them. Yeah. What what's happening with the app? What's 
how are you hitting sort of four, five, and six there? Right, that's that's a good question. And to my understanding, um, it's the way that the, the the valves are set is that below a certain gain threshold, it's kind of passing through the extra gain stages clean. Yeah. Which means that when you back your volume off, they're not really doing much. Mm. But then when you really blast it, they just saturate that bit more and kind of emulate yeah, yeah. a power section on 10. Okay. Which was always the original intent when like, Soldano started modding Marshalls was mm. to make it sound like a, a blasted Marshall without being so loud you wanted to die. Yeah. So the, the, the upside of it for me is that when you back your volume off, you still have two or three gain stages, so it's almost a little bit martial. There was loads of scope there when you're pulling back the, the volume. Mm. And that, for, if you can't see clearly on the camera because it's so far away, the lead pre-gain is on one and a half out of 10. Now, I never ever have the gain on this, on the lead channel above about four. Because what happens if you do? Oh, you just get sustain and then you just get feedback and then it becomes fuzzy and uncontrollable okay. because you're then overloading each game stage to the point where it's not really fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. But then for me, the game control at that point is a traditional game control if you've got a very low output guitar. Mm. You're then just using that to compensate. Okay. So you can get a screaming lead tone out of a vintage Telecaster with this thing. Mm. You would then turn the gain up to about seven. Okay. But that's that's just compensating at that point rather than using it creatively. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I always try and keep in mind as well is that gain is all relative. If you've got a vintage guitar and you want a similar tone, you then in your head, right, we're going up three gain notches to get that thing I was after. Yeah. It's all comparative. But um, that's with the mid slightly scooped. It's quite a mid forward amp, this. It's, um, yeah. it's a world away from the kind of fender -y tone. That didn't sound massively scooped to me. No, uh, everyone assumes that uh, metal amps like the 5150 are really scooped, mm. but usually they're not. Usually that's the mix engineer on the record scooping it afterwards. Because okay. 5150 is a very mid-heavy amp. Uh, the Vintage 30 is the one everybody uses with it. It's a very mid-heavy speaker as well. Yeah. So in the room, it's actually full of that mid character. Yeah. But people assume on record they've heard these really scoopy sounds. Mm. That must be that, but it's not. It's that you've recorded that and then you've taken the EQ as a mix engineer and just gone and just okay, yeah. removed it all to make room for the vocals. <laughs> Which is why a lot of my favourite albums, they don't do that. Okay, cool. One of my favourite albums, uh, Kill Switch Engage, uh, End of Heartache. Um, it's basically a 5150 just really really loud really loud yeah. but they've not scooped all the mids out and it just works because it is that that martially tone stack but just with more and I mean if I turn the lead up and if you want to play a little bit imagine you had a boost pedal in front of it but you don't need one yeah. and if I take the the low down and the resonance down to compensate for the fact that we don't, we're not using a boost pedal <laughs> Funnily enough, I've got a 6505, which is the exact same amp. Yeah. Now that one. There you go. Sold. <laughs> so with, with all that, I think that's a good uh, point to ask this. Yeah. 5150, I assume that's designed for Eddie Van Halen. Yes. And that's his signature amp, was it? It was in the early 90s, yeah. And then, um, what was it? The 60... So the 6505, okay. So Eddie Van Halen, that was his signature amp, the 5150, and then he left PV to go and do his own thing with other brands. 5150 is Eddie Van Halen's number, his brand, yeah. so he took that with him. Yeah. But the actual amp design wasn't his. Yeah. 
So PV kept making the amp, but they just had to change a number. Okay. So that's where the 6505 comes from, is they literally are the same amp. Okay. The 6505 Plus and the 5150 Mark II are a different thing. They've got a, a more workable, clean channel and a different game tone. But even then, this, they're different, but it's just the numbers changed. Mm. Copyright, that's it. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a convert. <laughs> Especially with the, um, the cab being something that I wouldn't necessarily be my first choice with kind of heavier tones. It, um, but that sounded really cool. Yeah. And it's amazing. They're so versatile. Everybody assumes it's gain here, mid scoop, metal, metal, metal. And you can get that and you can get it so easily. But one thing that the, um, the guitar community that I've talked to about it is it's really hard to mess it up. <laughs> it's yeah. really hard to get a bad sound out of this thing. You've got to really be trying. And yeah, they're uh, more versatile than people think. Okay, cool. I'm going to um, suggest, you were talking about some bluesy tones yes. on the, um, the lead channel, but backed off. Yes. That totally isn't my playing. Okay. Or I can have a crack but I'll embarrass myself. <laughs> Joe, do you want to have a quick? Yeah, by all means, yeah. yeah jump in. <laughs> Really smooth sound, isn't it? It's yeah. I mean, when you're not going scoopy mid all the highs, yeah, it's got a full tone to it. I've never heard a 5150 sound like that. <laughs> I've not done anything to it, I promise. It's not like modified or anything. Like it's a champ inside. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely stock using normal gain because a lot of the metal guys use the high gain input, which yeah. honestly isn't much of a difference. In fact, I'll just try that. It's just got a little bit more value. <laughs> got a bit more top end as well, I think. Yes, yeah. it pushes things a little harder. But then you can compensate for that on the amp if you want. And yeah, if you want the high gain chugger chugger, it'll do it, it'll do it perfectly well. Dynamic as well, isn't it? Yeah, I'm well impressed with that. Yeah. 5150s for everybody. <laughs> well, that has been an experience and I'm glad I shared it with everybody. Joe, Paul, behind the camera, thank you very much. And we'll see you all in the next video. See you later. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server, link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.